had told you that I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you some nouns that are have a relationship with the hour noun class. They are in the kiwi and they are in the hour noun class. Hujambo na karibu. Karibu tena katika ufalme wa Kiswahili. Kama jamii tunasaidiana kukikuza na kukimarisha Kiswahili chetu kwa sababu tunaamini experts wa ones beginners na wewe pia uko karibu kuwa mmoja wetu na kuongea Kiswahili kama mwenyeji. Kwa hiyo na kusihi tafadhali bonyeza hicho kidude hapo chini subscribe, like, share, jiunge uwe mmoja wetu hapa katika jamii ya Swahili Kingdom ili uweze kujifunza Kiswahili bila tashushi zozote. Hi everyone, welcome to Swahili Kingdom. My name is Connie, I speak six languages. And today I'm going to teach you about the five main noun classes in Swahili. So I'm going to simplify them for you, for you to understand each noun class. The five main noun classes in Swahili. They are the ones that I'm going to simplify. If you are interested in this video, kindly continue watching. Okay, which five main noun classes are we going to check? We are going to check the hour noun class the Kiwi noun class, the Lia noun class, the Easy noun class, and the Ue noun class, or the noun class that they usually call the Hm Me noun class. If you are interested in this video, as I said, sit back with a pen and a paper somewhere you can write something that you we have mentioned and it touches your call, like for you to remember, you can write down, okay? And, uh, you can share this video with your friend, okay? Your friend who is learning Swahili and they would like to know something about noun classes or your friend who just wants to start Swahili and they don't know anything about it. Noun class is a very important foundation in Swahili, okay? And these five main noun classes are the best foundation. So today I'm going to give you, if you have never understood noun classes this is the video for you you are going to understand you are going to connect the dots today and if maybe you had given up about noun classes i urge you to please watch this video and see how it's going to help you out because i'm simplifying the noun classes so this is how we are going to go about it this is how we are going to go about it i'm going to start by number one mentioning the noun classes I mentioned why the noun classes is like that, okay? I mentioned why the noun classes is like that. Then we go to the singular and plural formation of the noun class. After that, we form at least three sentences in that noun class. Then we go to the next noun class. Are you ready? Let's begin. So we are going to start with the our noun class. Number one, what is an our noun class? First of all, when you mention an hour noun class to someone, let's say a native, they are going to know that an hour noun class is related to all living things. An hour noun class is a noun class for all living things. All living things. Something you need to know is that living things die. When they die, which noun class do they go to? Because when living things die, they go to another noun. The other noun class that they go to is the easy noun class. And you know what? We are going to discuss that in this video. So you are going to know about the our noun class and the easy noun class. Okay? How good? Okay, let's continue. So the our noun class has living things. You are in the our noun class. I am in the our noun class. Uh, an animal is in the our noun class. Okay? A dog is in the our noun class. A cat. A fish is in the hour noun class, okay? They are living things. So the first common way to identify an hour noun class, which makes it very simple, is that they are living things. It is composed of living things, okay? Now let's go to the singular and plural of the hour noun class. One thing you need to know is most hour noun classes start with M or MW in singular. They start with M or MW in singular. And then in plural, they go for WA. Okay? So in singular is M or MW and in plural it's WA. We are going to have three examples. The first example is Mwalimu. Mwalimu is a teacher. Starting with MW. 
mwalimu is a teacher so when you go to plural it will become walimu you remove the mw replace it with wa mwalimu walimu okay mwalimu walimu the second one we are going to go to mwanafunzi mwanafunzi is you a student who is listening to this video mwanafunzi is a student and you can see it is also starting with mw mwanafunzi the plural will have wa so remove mw put wa mwanafunzi wanafunzi and then lastly we are going to go to this noun which is mtoto a child mtoto mtoto a child mtoto is starting with an m okay so in plural you're going to remove so mtoto is starting with an m in plural it's going to be watoto okay you are going to remove the m and put w mtoto watoto so you have looked at three examples mwalimu mwanafunzi and mtoto the plurals are walimu wanafunzi and watoto now let's go to sentence formation that's why you're going to see why the noun class is called a wa okay let's start we are going to start with mwalimu for example mwalimu anafundisha kufundisha is to teach okay kufundisha is to teach so mwalimu anafundisha the teacher is teaching mwalimu anafundisha the plural will be walimu walimu wanafundisha so you see we have mwalimu a anafundisha the plural walimu wanafundisha so that's why it's called the awa a anafundisha wa wanafundisha okay now you know you know a lot about the hour now plus right you know quite a lot about the hour now plus or maybe you have understood something about the hour now plus that you didn't know so those are the points that i'm going to leave you with in the hour now plus okay if you have any questions if you have any question in that now plus just comment down below let's go to the next now plus the next now plus is the key v key v noun plus k i apostrophe v i okay k i dash v i key v noun plus okay so in this noun plus we are going to it is quite simple why because most of nouns in this noun plus start with key so when you see a noun that is starting with key most probably is in the key v noun plus key key a noun starting with key most probably is in the key v noun plus so a lot of nouns that start with key are in this noun plus and a few number of nouns starting with cha are also in this noun plus a few number of nouns starting with cha are also in this noun plus at the end of this key v noun plus i'm going to explain to you some nouns that are in this noun plus and also in the hour noun plus and we are going to see the relation okay don't worry it's not going to be hard it's very easy okay so let's start the plural singular plural singular of nouns in this noun plus we are going to start with nouns that start with key so singular we yes, we will take the noun kitty 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 is a chair it is starting with k i kitty so in plural we remove the key and put v to be vt kitty vt okay kitty vt the next one let's look at kitabu kitabu is a book kitabu in plural you remove the key and you replace it with a v it becomes vitabu kitabu vitabu and lastly let's look at a noun that is starting with cha which is chakula food chakula food chakula in singular starting with cha in plural it will be vyakula it will start with vya chakula vyakula so you have looked at kiti kitabu chakula viti vitabu vyakula okay we have looked at the three now let's go to sentence formation we are going to use those three nouns as well okay for us to be familiar okay so we are going to start with 
ki kiti kimevunjika kiti kimevunjika so kiti kimevunjika don't worry about the tense right now if you don't know about the me tense okay just check the noun class kiti kimevunjika which means a chair is broken in plural it will be viti vimevunjika okay so we are removing ki and putting vi viti vimevunjika chairs are broken kiti kimevunjika viti vimevunjika let's go to kitabu kitabu kimepotea kitabu kimepotea a book was lost or a book is lost kitabu kimepotea in plural vitabu vimepotea vitabu vimepotea books are lost okay vitabu vimepotea so you can see why we have why the noun is called ki v okay we have in ki in singular and v in plural now let's go to the noun chakula so the nouns that are starting with cha in the ki v noun plus starting with cha in singular and via in plural when forming a sentence okay they use ki okay in the sentence they use ki so i want you to not or to be careful pay attention on how I'm forming this sentence for example chakula kimeiva chakula kimeiva so this one means the food is ready the food is ready chakula kimeiva not we are not saying chakula chimeiva we are saying chakula kimeiva okay then in plural we will say vyakula vimeiva vyakula vimeiva vyakula vimeiva one of the mistake that i have i have noticed with my students is that uh, since they see that <coughs> this noun is having this this in uh, for example kitabu kitabu kimepotea it is having ki ki consistently so they do the same when you go to cha which is not the right thing to do for example when you say chakula chimeiva because they want to put cha consistently but since cha is not the dominant thing in that noun class it's called ki v so it becomes chakula kimeiva vyakula vimeiva okay those are the things that you need to know in the ki v noun class but i had told you that i'm going to tell you I'm going to give you some nouns that are have a relationship with the our noun class. They are in the kivi and they are in the our noun class. What are these nouns? So these nouns are living things, but living things that start with cha. Living things that start with cha. And most of these living things are usually uh, people who are incapable. Okay, for example, someone who is deaf someone who is dumb someone who is um, so deaf and dumb okay they are they show incapacity most of these nouns they either begin with ki or cha they show incapacity but they are living things though they start with ki or cha so meaning they also have a section of the ki v noun class okay so let's see this noun class there are uh, probably four okay or probably four but i'll give you the ones that uh, i are used in day-to-day uh, -day life it's not very common for you to encounter them but what if you encounter them it will be very respectful if you use that noun of showing capacity in the our ah, noun class because you are showing them respect they are living things okay so we are going to start with kiziwi kiziwi is someone who is deaf okay kiziwi you can see that person is starting with ki the noun is starting with ki kiziwi so the plural will still take the ki v form okay the ki v noun plus form it will be viziwi kiziwi viziwi 
But now when you go to form a sentence, is where you use the awa noun class. For example, Kiziwi ameondoka. A deaf person has left. A deaf person has left. Kiziwi ameondoka. If you don't want to mention the name of the person, you're going to say Kiziwi ameondoka. A deaf person has left. And then in plural it will be Viziwi wameondoka. Deaf people have left. Viziwi wameondoka. Viziwi wameondoka. Another noun is kipofu. Kipofu is someone who cannot see. Kipofu. It is the same thing. It go. It does the same thing as kiziwi. Okay. So kipofu becomes vipofu. Kipofu ameondoka becomes vipofu wameondoka. Kipofu wameondoka. Vipofu wameondoka. So those are the two most common. If you see any other noun that shows incapacity and it's a living thing, do the same thing. Okay? It, uh, it is going to be in the key now plus in plural singular of the noun. But when you form a sentence, put that noun in the hour noun class to show them to show that it is a living thing. Give them their respect. Because the noun class, the hour noun class is really, really respected. When you use uh, the name of a person or a living thing, especially people, when you use people in any other noun class apart from the hour noun class, it can, it can sound disrespectful or um, lack of, it just d doesn't sound right. And people might take it wrongly and maybe... You just forgot grammar or something. So the hour now plus is quite important, especially for people. Okay? And because it's quite easy, it's the noun plus for all living things. Okay? So those are, uh, that's everything I can tell you about the key now plus. I hope you have gotten something in there. Lastly, actually the key now plus is also used for diminutives. Okay? When you want to... When you want to show that something has a lower value than it should be, you use the diminutive, the noun class KV. Okay? Now, let's go to the Lia noun class. Lia noun class. The Lia noun class is known for its singular nouns not having um, a proper, like the way we, we can see the prefixes for the hour and KV, the way we have seen them. The Lia rarely has that. Like, it is not consistent with the prefixes of its nouns in singular. Okay? It's not consistent. But most of its nouns begin with J. But there are other nouns that don't begin with J, but they are in the Lia noun class. So how do you really identify a noun in the Lia noun class? If a noun can take ma in plural, it's probably a Lia noun. If a noun can take ma in plural, it's probably a lia noun class. So that's how you can simply identify a noun in this noun class. Okay? So now we are going to look for three examples in this lia noun class. Let's start with gari. Gari is a vehicle. Gari, you can see it is starting with just any other um, consonant. Gari, and then in plural it will be magari because it must take a ma. Magari. The second noun class, let's take rinda. Rinda. Rinda is a dress. Rinda is a dress. I was talking with someone who learned um, the word rinda as uh, who learned the word rinda as gauni. Uh, she told me that there are some apps that are saying a dress in Swahili is called gauni. So, a dress in Swahili is called rinda. Gauni is just a normal gown, but it's still a dress, though it's a gown. So, when you want to call a dress in Swahili, just use rinda to make it simple. Okay, so rinda, marinda. Rinda, marinda. And the last one, we are going to use gino. Gino is an irregular noun in this lia noun class. Gino, meno. You can see it is having meno instead of mano. It is supposed to have ma. So that's why I'm telling you it's irregular. Okay. So we have those three nouns in the Lia noun class. Let's make sentences. Starting with gari. An example. 
gari limeondoka gari limeondoka a vehicle has left plural magari yameondoka li ya li ya gari limeondoka magari yameondoka gari limeondoka magari yameondoka rinda limeraruka rinda limeraruka address is torn rinda limeraruka then it becomes marinda yameraruka rinda limeraruka marinda yameraruka okay dresses are torn marinda yameraruka going to gino you're going to say gino limengoka kungoa is like to pull out so kungoka is to be pulled out okay gino limengoka Gino limengoka. Plural, meno ya mengoka. So you can see the liya consistency. The liya consistency. So those are the things that um, I wanted to touch on on the liya noun class for you to remember what the liya noun class when to, for you to remember what the liya noun class is when you encounter a noun. Okay? And something else to add on that is that uh, as the key V, now class has the diminutives, now the Leah has the adjuvantatives. Okay, but today is not time for that. Let's continue with the noun classes. If you have any question in those three noun classes that we have discussed already, just comment down below. I'm going to reply. Or someone else who knows is going to reply. Okay, we encourage people who know something to just Say it down below if someone ask a, asks a question. Kindly just, if you know the answer, you can comment down below. Trust yourself. Yeah, thank you so much for that. Let's go to the noun number four, which is easy. The easy noun class. The easy noun class. The easy noun class is well known for constructed things. Constructed things. Okay, the easy noun class is well known for constructed things things but the easy noun class is also known for nouns that don't have a plural nouns are just like that nouns are just like that you can know their singular and plural when you are forming a sentence that's why you're going to see an e for the singular and a z for the plural but when it's just a noun like that you wouldn't know if it's singular or plural so those are the two things that the easy noun class is known for. Let's go to its nouns. Nouns in the easy nouns. The first one is nyumba. 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 Nyumba is a house. It's constructed, right? Nyumba. Nyumba is a house. Its plural will still be nyumba, meaning it doesn't have a plural and a singular. So it qualifies to be in the easy noun class. Nyumba, nyumba. The other one is ndege. Ndege. Okay, there are two types of ndege. We have ndege that is a bird. That's a living thing, meaning it's in the our noun class. And you have ndege that is an aeroplane. It was constructed or it is being constructed. It was constructed, yeah? An aeroplane was constructed. So it is in the easy noun class. Because it is ndege, ndege. We don't say ndege, mandege. Ndege, ndege. Okay? Another easy noun class we have is um, chupa. Chupa, a bottle. Chupa is something that was manufactured. Okay? You can see it is starting with cha, but it is not in the key noun class. Okay? Because we cannot say chupa, viupa. It will be chupa, chupa. So it is in the easy noun class. It was manufactured, it was manufactured, it doesn't have a plural. Okay, so we have nyumba ndege chupa. Let's make sentences with them. Nyumba, nyumba imejengwa, a house has been built. Nyumba imejengwa, in plural, nyumba zimejengwa, houses have been built. Nyumba imejengwa, nyumba zimejengwa. So you know the plural by the sentence. Nyumba imejengwa. Nyumba zimejengwa. Let's go to ndege. Ndege imepaa. Okay, so kupaa is to go to the air, to 
flying to the air. Okay, kupa. But we also have a difference between an aeroplane flying and a bird flying. So for a bird, it's called kupeperuka. But for an aeroplane, it's called kupa. Okay, so ndege imepa. Ndege imepa. Then the plural will be ndege zimepa. Chupa, we are going to say chupa imevunjika. Chupa imevunjika, a bottle is broken. Chupa imevunjika, in plural, chupa zimevunjika. Chupa zimevunjika. Okay, so we have nyumba, ndege, and chupa. Okay, those are the things that you need to know in the easy now class for you to get better at it or for you to connect the dots. If you have any question, comment down below. Let's go to the now last noun class, which is u e noun class, or sometimes which is called the m m mi noun class, or ngelia miti, ngelia miti, which means the trees noun class. Okay, so after telling you that you can know that this noun class has a lot of plants in it. <laughs> okay, yeah. So this noun class, as I have said few seconds ago. This noun class is categorized by plants. This noun class is categorized by plants. It has almost all the plants in here. All the plants in here. And most of the plants start with M. Okay? Mchungwa, um, mpapai, muembe, mnazi. Most of them start with M, but they are plants. They are not living things. Okay, they are not like human beings or living things. They are plants. They are plants. So the mummy u e or ngeliamiti is has plants. So we are going to see three examples. Three examples in singular and in plural. We will start with mti. Mti. Mti is a tree. Mti. In plural it becomes miti. So you remove m and you put mi. Mti. Miti, mti, miti, mnazi, mnazi is a coconut tree, mnazi in singular and minazi in plural, mnazi in singular and minazi in plural, and lastly, mpapai, mpapai is a popo tree, mpapai in plural, mipapai, mipapai. So, let's look at their sentences. Starting with mti. Mti umevunjika. Mti umevunjika. In plural, it will become miti imevunjika. Miti imevunjika. So, umevunjika, imevunjika. Okay? Let's go to mnazi. Mnazi umevunjika. Mnazi umevunjika. The plural will be minazi imevunjika. Minazi imevunjika. Okay? Let's go to the third one. Mpapai. Mpapai umevunjika. Mpapai umevunjika. The plural will be mipapai imevunjika. Mipapai imevunjika. So those are the five main noun classes that are very, very important for you to know. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, like this video, share with your friend, Subscribe and comment down uh, below how you find it. If you have anything, any comment, anything that you want to comment, just tell us down below. If you'd like to support me financially, you can click the link down below of buy me a coffee. You can buy me whichever amount that you want and I will be really, really, really grateful. Uh, you can watch the video that videos that are recommended at the end and I will